What's up guys? How are you all doing? Hey, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be checking out the Raspberry Pi Cast or the RazPi Cast, which is basically going to be a software that we can install on our Raspberry Pis that will allow it to become a Google Chromecast basically, where you can throw uh, YouTube videos to it, you can throw videos that you have stored on local media to it, all that sort of thing. If that sounds like something that would be interesting to you, please stay tuned. It's coming up right here, right now on MI Sperry. Okay guys, so as the intro said, we're going to be taking our Raspberry Pi and turning it into a Chromecast more or less, or at least type device. What I've got for you today is I have a Raspberry Pi Zero is what this is. This is the Zero W, which has uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth embedded into it. So you need to pick up one of these if you're wanting to copy along what I'm doing. This I figured would be the easiest because it's kind of small, kind of like a Chromecast, you know? So anyway, that's what we're going to be working with today is this little guy. And we're, I've already flashed Raspbian to it. So I use right now I'm using Raspbian Stretch, uh, latest version as to the date that this video is coming out. Anyway, so we're using that. And uh, there's some very simple software we're going to install. This is the app that you're going to need. So if you're Google Play or whatever, uh, download Raspberry Podcast. I'm not sure if it's on Macintosh or not. So anyway, so I don't think that it uh, is available for Apple. I think the only thing is on Google Play. Of course, I don't know if a Chromecast works very well with Apple products. And so we'll go ahead and cable this up and I'll get and we'll get into uh, the configurations on the Pi itself. OK, so to get started doing this, we're going to come to raspberrypi.org slash downloads and we're going to pick the Raspbian image. And I think the latest one is stretch currently. So we'll download that. Um, once you download that, then all you have to do is pull out something like Win32 Disk Imager. That's a, a good one that you can just find. Just Google around. You'll find it. You load up your Raspbian stretch image. You put a brand new uh, uh, micro SD card in there. Um, I've got one. I put a 32 gig in there just because that's what I had laying around. Um, and then you just hit right. It's going to tell you that you're going to erase everything on it. Yes, that's fine. It's brand new anyway. So we're going to let that write. So that'll write the image to the uh, file. And then once it's done, we'll be right back and I'll show you how to put it together. Okay, guys, and just like that, uh, it is over with, and it, all I did was take the SD card out, put it into the Pi, and here we are. Now, the resolution is not exactly great. I'm going to skip this uh, first step of uh, putting it together and uh, uh, making passwords and all that stuff. I'm just going to skip that for now. Now, you will need one of these little cables that is a uh, micro USB to normal USB if you want to plug in a uh, normal USB keyboard. Um, I'm using one of these little tiny keyboards, um, but it still uses the standard USB uh, cable, so you may want to pick these up. I've got links down in the description. If you click that link and you end up getting some, it helps the channel out, but there's a, there's a link down in the description, as well as if you want to use the same Raspberry Pi as I have, uh, at least the Pi Zero that I have, and that has the little uh, little case that comes along with it. My wife's in the background. Um, and put that together. Uh, it's it's down in the description as well, so go check that out. Hello. Hi, honey. I think my wife's getting ready to work out. Anyway, anyway, um, let's see here. So what I'm going to do is, first things first, the resolution on this is just absolutely atrocious. So I'm going to fix that by going over here to properties, and then we're going to go down to the Raspberry Pi config. What's that? Loads. All right. So once that loads, then we come down here to set resolution. We'll get rid of all this blurriness here. Let's see. We come into here, and I think... There's 720, 1280 by 720, 16 by 960 hertz. Yep, that works for me. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and OK this, and of course it will reboot also at the same time. That is a very orange shirt, by the way. I got a lot of compliments on it. Or, or no, like, I guess wow, it's you pink. Look, uh, it, it, looks, nice. it looks orange, it though. Was really, it was really funny. Like, yeah, it's, it's a workout shirt. It's funny, though. The camera makes it look orange. It's actually not as orange as, as the camera's making it look. Well, it looks nice. Yes, it looks nice. Comment down below if you think it looks nice. <laughs> or, not, or, or not. Or not. Or say or if it's not. horrible or whatever. Um, we're going to turn SSH on here as well by going to uh, the, pref the interfaces and choosing SSH. So that way we'll be able to uh, go over to it and make it a little easier. So we're going to hit OK. 
and then it should ask us if we want to reboot. We're going to say yes, and I will, uh, I'll be back after it's uh, fully rebooted. Okay, and just like that, we're rebooted, so that looks a whole lot better um, so far as resolution-wise. Of course, now I'm doing a video capture with a video capture device, so it's, it's looking a little, uh, hi guys. My daughter's back with her little friend, Emma. So uh, the video's got uh, gonna have a little bit of pixelation, but trust me, in real life, it actually looks really nice. It'll actually come out HD quality, it's really good. But this is gonna be a little bit fuzzy just because it's my video capture device and it's not you know, super high quality. But anyway, first thing we need to do is we're gonna need to, uh, we've enabled SSH, so we need to enable some Wi-Fi. So let me scoot my picture out of the way. Let's go down here. So we need to come up here and connect up to a home Wi-Fi, and there's one of my Wi-Fi's, yeah. And I'm not gonna show you my passphrase, so I'll be back once I'm connected. Okay, so it should be connecting up right now. So what we'll do um, is once it gets fully connected, we'll write down the IP address. So all you gotta do is hover over it, and we've got 192.168.178. Okay, so that's what we got. So now what I'm gonna need to do is I'm going to use a cool little configuration tool called Putty. Let me. Uh, get things switched over here. So we're gonna use putty here and we should be able to go 192.168.1.78 and hit open for SSH. And we should get it, if not, if you run into this problem, um, sometimes for some reason Windows Firewall will mess things up. And so what you have to do is you have to ping your computer from the Raspberry Pi, which is not that big of a deal. Um, it's just kind of a pain. So let's see, let me get back over to our Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna move my picture back up. Ooh, click. All right, so move me back up here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here, grab a term inimitable, and then we're gonna ping that real quick. I gotta look down, hold on. So 192.168.1.10. And that's my computer's IP address. And so it looks like we're able to reach it. So I'm gonna control C and stop that. And then let's go back over to my computer. Let me get my putty terminal up and then let's move on over to there. Let's try this again. 192.168.1.78 was our IP. There it is. See, I don't know what that is. It's like, it's like Windows Firewall blocks it or something. So then you say yes to that. You're gonna sign in with Pi, and then the default password, if you did like me and skipped through everything, is Raspberry. So R A S P B E R R Y, Raspberry. All right, and just like that, we are now in the Raspberry Pi. Okay, now what I did real fast was I uh, it made the the font a whole lot bigger for you guys, so you guys can see what is going on. So first thing we need to do is we need to get the uh, GitHub library. So we're gonna choose the Git. Uh, clone and then https colon slash slash github.com slash harold o m x i v we should be able to clone that repository all right now that's done cloning so now what we need to do is we need to install some libraries so that way it can manipulate uh pictures so we need to install a jpeg library and a png library so we're going to do that by doing sudo apt get install uh let's see where are we at L I B J P E G eight dev and L I B P N G twelve oops twelve dash dev so we want to install both of those once they're done installing then we should be able to build uh the uh, OMX IV, which is the software that is gonna be the streaming software that will connect up with the Raspi uh, app that we just downloaded. So we're gonna let that install and we'll be back once that is finished. Okay guys, so now that's finished, uh, installing those different pieces. Uh, so now we get to uh, start building on it. So we're gonna CD to the OMXIV, and I did this from just the regular home directory. So uh, if you do that and you do the git clone, wherever you perform the command git clone and, and then that repository is where it's gonna install this folder. So you're gonna CD to OMXIV, okay? And then once in there, you're gonna do a make IL client. And then that will do all the compiling for that. And then after that, we will perform just a normal make. So we're gonna let this uh, compile. I'll probably give it a minute, uh, stop the recording so it'll do it. Unless, well, maybe it'll go faster. 
Yeah, no, that's gonna be good. So now we're gonna go ahead and issue the make. So we just say make, that's all we say. And then this should uh, build and compile everything. We'll be back when that is finished. Okay, so that has finished itself. So the next thing we need to do is do the install. So we're just gonna do a sudo and then make install. And that's it. Literally, it is installed now. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take you over down to my bench top and uh, we'll check out how to configure the Raspi uh, software as well. Okay, guys, so here we are at my bench top. I'm gonna try to sit sideways here and, and talk to you, but, uh, and I apologize for this camera. I gotta get a new camera, so that's that's another reason. Hit those links down below. It helps out the channel. I can get better, better quality cameras, <laughs> but I need to get a better camera for this because it's a little blurry. It's one of the old, like, you know, uh, for it, it's a non HD camera, but hey, it gets the job done. So once you download that app, that Raspi Cast app, you're gonna press the, the button here. And uh, SSH fingerprint differs. Yeah, I had already set this up uh, once. So what you'll do is it will ask you for the IP. In fact, it'll come up here and it's basically right here. It'll ask you what the uh, SSH settings are for this. So that's why it's important that you enable SSH. It's not just for uh, the ease of being able to install it. It's also for how this works. So you put in the IP address. So there's our IP address, 1.78, and then the username and password as what it is. And like I said, if you're using defaults like me, it'll be Pi, and then the password will be uh, Raspberry. And then you just hit OK, and that's literally it. Then if you want to cast something, you just hit cast. And then any videos that are on your phone or anything like that, like there's one where uh, my kids were making hilarious sounds in, you know, in the car and stuff like that. All you do is just uh, select that. That's literally all you have to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set things up and get it where now that it's connected, because otherwise it'll tell you like down below here, it'll tell you if it can't get connected or if there's a problem. If you run into that same problem, you may have to ping your Android device. Now I can show you how to do that. Um, how you can tell what your IP address is on your phone is you have to go to your settings. So you go to your settings and then you go down to system. Then you go to, after you go to system, you need about phone and then after that you gotta go to I think it's status yeah it's status there it is IP address so there you go it's under status so after you go through all that then you get your status and that way you can get your IP address okay so that's how you find it uh, on your phone so let me go ahead and get some some windows set up and we'll take a look at uh, making this thing work Okay, so I should be good to go. Um, so now we got this set up. So now I'm looking at the HDMI output of my Raspberry Pi. And then I've got a camera set up down here uh, so I can show you uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, uh, app. Now, cool thing about this app, if you want to mess with YouTube, here, let me, let me pull YouTube up real quick. I'm gonna pull up my YouTube app. You can actually stream YouTube with this. And how you do that is you find a video that you want to stream so let's look through oh i don't know let's look through my videos here sure so you find a video you want to stream so let's say the last video i did and let's say i want to stream this what i do is well first i gotta pause it but what you do is you don't hit the cast button that's for like a google chrome what you do is you want to share this video is what you're wanting to do so you push the share button oops sorry let me get it up here you press share and then of course you're you're device is going to pull up your different sharing deals and you're going to scroll through there till you find that Raspi cast and then when you press that it's going to cast it and so we just saw the screen turn black and there it is there i am so i am now casting my youtube video from my youtube app on my phone through the raspberry pi cast into my raspberry pi so, all right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. That's pretty much it. It is very simple to set up. Like I said, <clears throat> if you want to check out the stuff that I use, the Raspberry Pi Zero W that I was using and everything else, links down in the description. Please check those out because they do help the channel. I get a little bit back. You get some cool stuff. I get a little bit back. And uh, it helps out the channel, although I can get better cameras and things like that. 
Also, check me out on Twitter and Instructables and all the other uh, social medias down below, especially Twitter and whatnot. By the way, I want to tell you guys, thank you very much for participating when I do uh, the polls. This was one of the polled videos. You know, I asked you guys if you'd like to see this video. You guys said overwhelmingly, I think it was like 50% of everybody that answered said yes, that they would like to see this video over the others. So I went ahead and did it. So that's a great way for you guys to get what you want is to give those polls or check those out. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button, please press that down below as well as ring the bell down there. If you don't ring that bell, you won't get notified when I send out polls or I ask you guys questions or send you out information as well as when new videos get uploaded. You won't actually know that. So definitely ring that bell down there. If you don't know what that is, that's that little bell icon that's right next to the subscribe button when you press subscribe right down, right down there. So make sure you hit that because that'll help you keep up to date with all the stuff that I'm doing. Also, definitely check me out on Twitter because I send lots of gifts and lots of funny things on Twitter. Also, I have started uploading videos to Facebook. So those of you that may have Facebook accounts and whatnot, check me out. I'm M.I. Sperry E.E. -E at Facebook. Links down there in the description. Check that out because my videos, will, I'm going to start putting them there. As well as if you haven't already, join up as a patron. I have a Patreon that's down below. If you join up for Patreon, you get some cool benefits. There's two different tiers, I think. Uh, to it. If you uh, like what I'm doing here and you want to give back to the channel, it's a great place to go do it. You get some cool content, get some cool giveaways. Also, this uh, we're going to be having a Maker Monday. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be this last one or if it's going to be the next one. Depends. But uh, hopefully uh, we'll get some giveaways fired up. So hopefully that's coming soon. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you very much for all the support and all the feedback. Please comment down below. I love reading your comments. I love getting feedback from you guys. It helps better the channel as well as it helps everybody else who's uh, watching maybe has the same questions. So definitely ask your questions. Give me some good feedback and all that jazz. And guys, with that, that ought to do it. I will see you next time.